Let's start off our nuclear journey with this past year MJ20 P42 question 12. State what is meant by the mass defect of a nucleus. So this mass defect, also known as delta M, hmm, it's a difference in mass for nucleus when they are separate versus when they are together in the nucleus or one, two, three, four, separate very, very far away at infinity. So this is how we can write the definition. Let me redraw this thing again. <laughs> one, two, three, four in the nucleus versus separate. Okay, so we can say that this is the difference between the mass of nucleus and mass of nucleus is this one lah, okay, and the total mass of separate nucleons. So the protons and the neutrons are all separate. In separate to where? Separate 1 cm apart? Eh, no, no, no. Separate to infinity. Oh. Separate nucleons. Uh, sep uh, total mass of separate nucleons, which are... Let's add another line. Which are separated to infinity. It means put very, very, very far apart. Okay, so this is two marks. Um, it's kind of flexy. Sometimes they'll give one for the other. But this, this whole sentence is one mark. The other one down here, separate to infinity. infinity. This is another mark. Okay, it comes the table. Let's do the table. Some masses are shown in table 12.1. Show that the energy equivalence of 1U is 934 MeV. Oh, this one we got to prove what is the... How do you convert mass to energy? The main, ener the main energy equation you want to use is E equals to mc squared. So we got to plug in everything. Oh. So this one, you need to convert to kg. So let's convert to kg. 1u, how many kg is this? They didn't give to us. Ah. No, you can see your data formula sheet. Where 1u is equivalent to 1.66 times 10 to negative 27 kg. Let's plug that in. So we write here 1.66 times 10, negative 27 kg. I don't want to write that. Kg already, no need to write. C is the speed of light, 3 times 10 to the power of 8 squared. Okay, so this one, you will get an energy of 1.494 times 10 to the negative 10 joules. Now, the default unit is joules. But if you see, they want this energy in terms of MeV. So we need to convert joules to MeV. How do we do that? First, you need to divide this. So I'm going to convert and write another line here. 1.494 times 10 to the negative 10 joules. Now, how do you convert joules to MeV? I want to get rid of the joules. So I'm going to put it down there and EV. So 1 EV is equivalent to 1.6 times 10 to the negative 19 joules. This, this number, you can find it in the data formula sheet of every past year question, second or first page. So if we do this calculation, you will get 933.75 times 10 to the 6 EV. And hey, times 10 to the 6, this is mega, which is the M in the EV up here. So we, this can be rounded off to, I guess, if 3SF, this will be 934 M EV. Proven. Done. This is two marks, so if you manage to do the final part and get to that value, that's one mark. If you use the EMC square equation, that's one mark there for you as well. All right, moving on. Part two. Calculate. Is it calculate? Ah, ah show, show. Wow, we are so generous. Show that the binding energy per nucleon of this helium-4 nucleus is 7.09 MeV. So how do you find binding energy? The first step is you need to find the mass defect. When your helium nucleus is together, like this, two proton, two neutron, they have a different mass than if they were separate neutron, neutron, proton, and proton. And that mass defect, we need to find it. Okay, so let's do that. So delta M is going to be, which one will be bigger, uh, separate neutrons. So we do that first. You have two protons, uh, what's the value? Uh? Two protons and two neutrons. I'm going to put blanks here first. So let's go to the table and find what is the mass of proton and neutrons in U. Proton. 
is this, neutron is this. So if you have a piece of paper, write that down, try calculations as well along with me. So plug that in, I should get hmm, this value here, which is 1.007276, 2 of 1.008665. Okay, so this is separate nucleons, two proton, two neutrons separate. But the mass of the nucleus is how much? They give to us, right? They usually give to you one. Ah, nucleus, when they're all put together, two proton, two neutron. This is 4.001506. So we're going to write that down. So this would be 4.001506. This will give me a mass defect of 0 0.0303. 030376U. Where did the mass go? Missing! Energy converted to energy already. So we need to convert this to energy. That will give us a binding energy. Oh, but it is binding energy per nucleon. So to do that, I'm going to binding energy per nucleon. No enough space to write. I'm just going to write that. This will be the binding energy. So we need to write that out here. This will be 0 0.030376U. <sighs> Did they give us a key to convert mass to energy? Ah? Mm, no, but they did ask us to prove it right here. Let's see this part. So we can use, if there's given to us, we can use that as a conversion. 1U is 934 MeV. So we're going to write that shortcut. So this one times 934 MeV per atomic mass unit. Okay, but don't forget, we need to also divide by the number of nucleons because it's per nucleon. How many nucleons does helium have? Four. Two proton, two neutron. Ma. So we say four. Lo. You can tell it by this helium dash four. That means there are four nucleons inside there. Mass number, atomic number. I don't know why else you want to call it. Okay, so divide by four, you will get the value of this one is 7.092 MeV. Yay, proven, shown. That's what they want us to show. Ma. So if you manage to get that, that's one mark. If you didn't, but you managed to get mass effect, that's another mark. B1. Okay, last part. Isotopes of hydrogen have binding energies per nucleon of less than 3 MeV. What's an isotope again? Ah? Oh, okay, okay. Revision of, of particle physics and nuclear physics. Hydrogen is an element and it can only have one proton. The neutron number, we don't care. How you want to have how many also can. So the original hydrogen has one proton. So I'm going to draw that here. It's hydrogen. But you could have hydrogen with one neutron or hydrogen with two neutrons stuck together. I guess you could call this H2 and H3. Deuterium, tritium, all these things. Uh, sure, but these are called isotopes of the original element. Original is hydrogen, H, just one proton. So the isotopes <clears throat> have binding energy less than 3 MeV. Okay. Suggests why the nucleum, the nucleum, nucleus of helium 4 does not spontaneously break down to become nuclei of hydrogen. What is happening? Helium, okay, let's draw helium 4. Helium-4 is two protons. That's a property. Helium must have two protons. How many neutrons? I don't care. Lah. So this is helium-4. Now, if you look at this, it you might think that, oh, miss, actually you can break down, right? This one can separate into a proton and neutron and a proton and neutron. And this would be a, a isotope of hydrogen that we just look at on the right side. So this is the hydrogen-2 and this is the hydrogen-2. Can do like this, ah. Can this happen? But they say, suggest why it does not happen. Hmm. Let's go back to the binding energy of this helium-4. How much energy is needed? 7.092. Oh, wow. So that is going to be on this side. Mm, let's label that here. 7.092 MeV. And all the isotopes less than 3 MeV. Now you gotta remember that the more binding energy you have, the more stable you are. So this one is very quite stable. 7 is quite a high number. 
uh, whereas three is quite is lower, not as stable. And the ultimate goal of everyone is to become as stable as they can for their nucleus. Lah. So you want to go to a higher binding energy. And so this reaction is not going to happen. It's not going to spontaneously break down. Nope. Because why would you want to go from not as stable? I mean, why do you want to go from very stable? You go here, no, lah, cannot. Are you going to go the other way? Can lah. <laughs> so this is not going to happen. And how are we going to explain that? Let's write it out. We're going to talk about the binding energy. The higher your binding energy, the more stable you are. So we will say that the binding energy per nucleon number, per nucleon, uh, no, not just per nucleon, can already lah. Per nucleon of helium 4 is much larger. And that is good. We want a large binding energy. It means that you are very stable. I have to personally put in 7.092 of energy to break them apart. So it's very stable. So large, uh, it's much larger. Okay. So we talk about what binding energy means. So a large amount of energy is required to separate them all. Separate who? Ah? All the nucleons. Oh. So separate all nucleons in the nucleus of helium-4. That's our story. Okay, so the first mark comes from you talking about binding energy of helium is much larger. So that's going to be the first mark, M1. Then you talk about how uh, the amount, large amount of energy is required to separate all of them. So a large amount of energy is required. To separate them, that's A1 mark. Okay. So I recommend you, if you're feeling strange about this binding energy thing, maybe go check out the theory video right before this. And that will give you a sneak peek of the basics of the binding energy graph. Which looks like this. So you can be any element on this curve, but your ultimate goal is to become stable. So you see this highest peak up here? That is your goal. You want to become iron, where you are very stable. Anything else? Mm, not very stable. Not as stable as iron. And iron has the highest binding energy. So all its nucleons are very tightly held together. Very stable. Going to take a lot of effort to break them apart. So that's all for this video. In the next section, we're going to look at fusion, fission, and how to think more about this graph. So stay tuned. That's all for this video. I'll see you in the next one.